Friends, as we gather on this great and solemn day, thanking God for the gift of Catholic men, fathers, husbands, Chris, Mike, Sean, Mark, Rick, Harry, and Cyrus, and Ryan, happy Father's Day. And all of you who are watching us from your homes, all your dads, amazing Catholic men, fathers, or father figures, Happy Father's Day. Friends, on this Father's Day, I chose to wear this chasuble that is dedicated to a blessed mother. She is the wife of Joseph. Joseph is the husband of Mary. That's how close I could come when it comes to vestments. I know we could wear green today, but I thought this was great dedication to you fathers. This was God. I got this from Magigori when I went on a pilgrimage a few years ago. So Jesus in the scriptures today talks about something that we're all grappling with. Any of you have not been frightened, afraid, fearful to come out of your homes, to be around people? Anybody that has not been frightened, you know, during this COVID-19 lockdown? Anybody here? Oh, in your homes? Waving? I don't think so, right? We've all felt that shock of certain shutdown and the scare of this virus, COVID-19, spreading, killing people instantly, people dying, falling like flies, so to say. So many people we lost. So why wouldn't anybody be afraid? Why wouldn't anybody be frightened? Why wouldn't anybody want to take care of themselves and others, right? Obviously. And the gospel today just says, fear nobody, fear no one, right? And you're thinking, Jesus, how about us? In 2020, well, he says the same thing. He knows what we are going through. He knows what we are experiencing, encountering. He says to us as well, friends, he says, fear not. Fear no one. Be not afraid. He says it twice in today's gospel. You know, Pope St. John Paul II, the start of his pontificate, he says, be not afraid. Be not afraid. Fear shuts us down. Fear isolates us. Fear helps us, you know, live, live sometimes in despair and uncertainty, right? So why is Jesus talking to his apostles today about fear nobody? He has been preaching for, many, preaching for several days, weeks, and months, and maybe couple years since he started his public ministry and the apostles were following him and now he says to them I'm sending you like sheep among wolves you know don't take more than one tunic don't take you know a money bag or whatever just wear you know no sandals on your feet things like that and just says go into the world and proclaim the good news and probably the guys that are shy are thinking, oh my goodness, you know, scratching their heads and thinking, go where? You've been doing this all along and now you've not even called us forward and says, hey Peter, can you give a speech today? Let's see how, how you do, you know, in front of the public. Or John, or, you know, the other apostle, Andrew, right? But he just says, go ahead, you know, and do not be afraid. So, and then, you know, I'm, I'm sure some, and we know some, most of them were fishermen. That guy was intelligent, John the Apostle, right? He's the evangelist. Maybe he went to school a little bit. Who knows? 2,000 years ago, what was happening? You know, we don't know. I don't know what happened yesterday. So, but, you know, there were some, I'm sure, that were shy. Others, like, extroverts, others introverts, and all kind of dynamics in their personality, and just says, Go. So first reaction of the apostles is fear, right? Anxiety, worry. What am I going to say? Bible isn't even written down, right? And then second, Jesus says, 
Do not worry about those who are going to kill you, harm your body, right? Worry about the one that is going to, you know, who can protect your body and your soul as well. And they're thinking, Jesus, martyrdom, death, oh my goodness, right? More fear, more anxiety, more worry. So that's what they're encountering at this time as Jesus is sending them. But Jesus says to them, worry about the one, there is one person who can protect your body and your soul alike. And Jesus stones it down, so to say. He recognizes that they are fearful and gives them the assurance. And he says, do not be afraid. You know why? Because your heavenly Father cares for you. Your heavenly Father loves you unconditionally. Your heavenly Father, you know those birds of the air, right? Maggie, have you seen those hummingbirds, right? So those kind of birds of the air and around, right? Camille, right? Have you seen birds flying around? So even God, God even cares for those birds, right? He says, Jesus says, the sparrows are cared by your heavenly Father. How about you? And then Jesus says something very dramatic. He says, he even counts, he even knows the hairs on your head. I just lost four this morning or more. And I'm thinking, Jesus, how about that? Yeah, the Father knows. That's how unconditionally he loves us. You know, that's how passionately God loves us as Father. He is merciful, kind, and loving. He's God. Get that? He's God. He's the creator of the universe. We have been created in his image and his likeness. And he loves us unconditionally. And that's the image of the father that we fathers, are your spiritual father and all you dads, fathers, you know, all you husbands, all you Catholic men who are watching, participating in this Holy Mass with your holy family from your homes, that's the Father Jesus is introducing us to today. He talks about bearing witness to his apostles in us. He talks about the persecutions and hardships, even that that we may encounter. But he also talks about a God who is loving, a God who is not going to leave us. A Father who cares, a Father who is protective, a God who is providential toward all his children. That's the fatherhood of God who is a caring father toward all his sons and daughters. And so with that fatherhood, that image of a God who is a loving father, God gave us Joseph, the husband of Mary, a real Catholic man who lived here on earth, who knew the hardships of family lives, who knew the sacrifices of family life overnight, not receiving any text message or Instagram, but just the angel saying, Joseph, rush to Egypt. You've got to save your family. You've got to protect your family. You love your family. And just, just follows, right? The scripture says, scripture doesn't give Joseph any words to speak, does he? But he Scripture talks about Joseph as a holy man, as a righteous man, right? As a man who was dedicated to his wife and his child, Jesus. That's the fatherhood we are looking at today. Getting back to the basics of fatherhood. If there's any issues, problems in our society, in our community, and if there are fears for us to get out, seeing the war, violence, looting, you know, peaceful protests as well, which is commendable. They are trying to, you know, seek some revolution or seek some, you know, seek justice and peace, to say the least, right? They're wanting their the voices to be heard, which is good, without violence, but in peaceful ways. Our country offers that, right? But, you know, let's, let's look at the whole picture of our community, of our society, of our neighborhood, and see what is lacking in our families. 
How many families today are living in an environment that only has a single parent, right? Either you have a dad who is raising children, not because the mother has been deceased, maybe some situations, but they are separated. Maybe your mother is taking care of six kids. They are separated, you know? Broken families, struggling homes. Those are real issues that we need to address today. Those are the basic, that's the basic fabric of our community, of our society, of our nation, of our world. As St. John Paul II said very clearly, as goes the family, so goes the world, right? So if you destroy family, you destroy the world. So if you upset family, you upset the world. So let's get to the basics. And so that is why this country gives us this opportunity to, you know, to really reflect on fatherhood, to really reflect on Catholic men, Christian men, and all men, to really reflect on a husband, you know, who is a caring, loving husband, selfless, and a protective father who provides sacrificially for the needs of his sons and daughters. Man and women, husband and wife, is key to our society and our community and our world. So let's get back to the basics. Let's pray every day as a family and husband, man, Catholic men, fathers, step into your role. Joseph wasn't afraid. He didn't know how this woman was pregnant, Mary, but he accepted the will of God. That's the key. Will of God is the key. Not my will, not the world's will, not the will of the social media, not the the will of the culture. Be countercultural and build that will of the Father within yourself and project it in the world. And when you do that, your fatherhood will be like Joseph, who was not afraid, a righteous man a truthful man, a man of integrity, a man of family. Catholic man, you do a lot for your family. Let's not forget to do what is essential to family life, which is bringing families, parents, husband, wife, bringing your children together each day, talking to them, praying with them, sharing meals with them, laughing with them, You know, playing with them, spending time with them. Otherwise, what the heck is, you know, all that money for? If you can't give them the basics, because that's what they need. But they don't know that's what they need. They'll ask you for smartphones. Give them smart life through your smartness as good, solid man of faith, integrity, love. It all starts with how you treat your wife. It all starts with how you and your wife treat each other respectfully and speak in one voice, one heart, echoing the same sentiments. And when you do that, world will oppose you, some of them, but there will be others who will be attracted to you. And slowly and gradually, we will change this world. Because only humans can change this world. Because only humans have got the integrity of will and intellect and decision making. And we can make that choice for family. And enter into that realm of getting back to the basics of family life. Catholic men, God bless you. Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen.